because we did hear that a lot of fat, you see the right? Lots of what? Fatty infantry shot. But I've always meant to check it and never really got around to doing it. Okay? No, on there will be two surfaces today, um, epiglottis. Now on its anterior aspect, we expect it to have what? Stratified spinocetithelium. Okay? And that anterior aspect of the epiglottis forms as a little depression. What is that name of that space that is just like anterior to the epiglottis? Sean, what's that space that is just like anterior? And there are three ligaments or three folds. The follicular. Very good. And we find the what? Medial and lateral glossoepiglottic folds. All right. So in this this is the region here of the follicular. All right, so this is all stratified squamous epithelium. So you should try to relate your gross anatomy to your histology always. All right, so that's very thick stratified squamous epithelium. Now what we find in real life is that at the tip of the epiglottis going into the uh, vestibule, there's not a sharp demarcation. So there is no that there's, there's not that sharp demarcation. In fact, the stratified squamous epithelium tends to go down to some degree on the and posterior aspect of the epiglottis. But there we see a lot of glands right here, and we may or may not, maybe the epithelium, ah, there. Now you see, this is its anterior aspect in the follicular, more rough, because that's exposed now to all of the surfaces of the tongue, so it's far more wear and tear epithelium on its anterior aspect. Glandular spectra is when you look over the posterior aspect, the stratified squamous epithelium is far more delicate. Okay? This is very robust right on this side here. Many more layers, thick and well developed. When we look at the posterior aspect, that membrane, that um, stratified squamous is becoming very, 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 very reduced in number of layers. And if we are lucky, we are not lucky here. Sometimes you can now actually see merging and changing to what? respiratory epithelium. So this maybe got so delicate here that the respiratory epithelium <coughs> went flying off. But as I said, watch out for this um, elastic cartilage and one of the diagnostic features histologically is that there's a lot of fat, a lot of fatty infiltration. So there's a lot of adipocytes. So that's cartilage right there and this is quite a different picture to see the trachea, which we are going to look at now. So that's the trachea that we are going to look at. And yes? Um, with the elastic cartilage, like how we can see the elastic fibers with the H and E staining, how do we tell? What's okay. an easy way of telling? No, that, that, particular, okay, that particular slide, there's another problem. Let me look at this epiglottis. Let me look at this one, okay? I will show you. Maybe the fatty infiltration is not that much. But the, the classic picture of, you know, these little nests of cartilaginous cells, what do we call these nests of cartilaginous cells? This gentleman here, who is on the ball? Where do we get these cartilage cells coming into these little groups of Very good, isogenous groups, chondrons or isogenous groups. So in the epiglottis, you tend not to see these isogenous groups um, in elastic cartilage, as you see as pronounced. Okay, there we see. See, that is what? This is elastic cartilage right here. Okay? Now the very neat arrangement, we don't... Give a chance, give a chance. No, 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 no. Wait a while. No, 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 no. Give a chance. Give a chance. No, 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 no. This is elastic. This is elastic. Yeah, that's a lot of the, the, the holes that is all fibrous. Give a chance. This is all going right through the epiglottis right here. This is a massive section. This is like a pig's epiglottis. Big, big and big, big, big whole thing. All right? So, where we see the little groups. So this is a very unusual um, slide, I would say. Just give a chance. Just relax a while. Let us compare that with this. Just keep that mental picture that you have. That's good. I'm happy you have good confidence. Very good. Or let us compare this picture here with this.
No, this is trachea. Okay? The trachea, there is the, the cartilage has a very well developed perichondrium. See that very well developed perichondrium right here? Okay? And, and we can see these groups of four, these nests of four, these isogenous groups. See these little isogenous groups right here? Right here. Okay? It was far more haphazard in the previous slide. Where is that slide going? Eh? Oh my gosh, my good fix epigraph is broke. Not a good story. The perichondrium is not as well developed. All right. When you look at the hair, right. see what is happening is that the fibers are. It's not like fiber cartilage, but the chondrocytes are quite separated by the elastic tissue. No, generally speaking. A lot of the elastic tissue that we get in this department, if you look at a number of them, it's stained black. All right, the elastic fibers are stained black. But this does not mean specially stained for elastic tissue. All right. So that's a distinguishing feature then, darkly stained. No, I would say with the epiglottis, watch out for fatty infiltration. All right, watch out for. Does anybody have another slide of it? You got this? Just pass me another slide. Yeah, just let me show you in another slide. Just pass another slide. Students, somebody.